This is my macro studio setup. You're very familiar with it. It's got the little tripods. Anyone who has subscribed to the channel knows this setup, but this is my old setup. Because this rig is a lot better and I can use it out in the field. I'm going to be covering several things in this video. I'm going to be pointing out several different products. Now, before I bring on the products, I have no brand loyalty to nobody. So anyone who knows, knows that my talk at the photography show has been cancelled. And while I was working on that, I built a new setup for doing indoor macro photography, mostly for living subjects like insects, my, my jumper spiders and my praying mantises. There is nothing wrong with my old setup. It did the job perfectly okay, although it was a little bit unstable. The tripods would only hold an A6 size card, nothing higher. You would have to have multiple tripods if you want a larger card. And also, you can't take it outside and use it for some outdoor macro. I've been finding lately as well that some of the components on these mini tripods are starting to break on me, hence why I have upgraded. So I'm gonna build that for you right now and we'll go through what each item is and how you can replicate it. The very first thing and the key thing for this really is the platypod. This it's a bit of an expensive piece of gear, but it is absolutely solid. There are two things that make this setup possible. So I'm going to talk about the first thing, and that is the ball head that you use for your setup. This is a newer ball head. There's no actual model number on it. It came with my tripod. Now you don't need that ball head for this to work, but what you do need is separate controls for the ball head and the uh, the twist of the head okay so i'm just going to put that on there and we'll come back to that in a minute so just bear that in mind here's the key to this new setup and that is these these are super clamps now these particular ones are andir super clamps they are half the price of the platypod super clamps but they are exactly the same thing they are basically a, a rebranded chinese uh, make of super clamp and this is what makes this whole rig so nice. So we have both types of threads. We have a nice handle just there that we can undo it and twist it. It's very, very fluid and very smooth. And then we have these like rubber kind of grips. With these rubber grips, we can grip stems of flowers quite tightly without damaging the stem of the flower, which is fantastic. Now, anyone who's used those alligator clips before without any of the insulation padding on there will know as soon as you grip a flower stem it just cuts it in half these do not they're absolutely fantastic so i'm going to place that onto the quick release plate for my ball head so now we can take our flower same as we would do all the time with those other tripods and we can place that in there and it's absolutely solid but there's no damage to the stem, which is brilliant. I absolutely love that. Now, coming back to the tripod head. So on this tripod head, it's a ball head. So we can move this ball head about, okay? Like any other tripod ball head. But this tripod has two different controls. So what I can do is I can tighten up the ball head so we can place it level. So it's level with the spirit level uh, guide here. So that's nice and tight. However, with the secondary control, I can still turn it. Okay, I can still turn it now. Remember that because that's key for our next part of the setup. So we've got some gooseneck arms. We can place, again, these super clamps to the gooseneck arms. I'm going to place one in the background. We will place another one in the foreground. So that is now our setup. We can now grab our backgrounds. Place that into our grip. So easy that is. It's very, very easy. So what I want to do here is set this up so that that background is in the background of the flower. Exactly the same as we would with our tripods. With this arm, I now have the option to place in a secondary flower like that. So if you imagine you've got your jumping spider or your prey mantis on uh, this flower here. You've got your background and you have a foreground subject. Now with this exact setup, you can get images like this. Or like this. 
where you appear to be shooting through the flower onto your subject and that frames up the image very nicely. I've got two more arms. So on those arms I can place a flash. Now because I'm using wireless flashes, I can place this flash here. So it's not connected to the camera via any wires. So I can use that as a fill flash. But I love these. Honest to God, go to the description below. There's a link to the exact ones I'm using. They are £15 for two. Okay, and they're absolutely fantastic. So now I can bring out my diffuser. I can place the diffuser into the clamp like that. So if I bring that round for you to see, you see there? So now we can have a flash, which I can move the flash in and out. I can move it wherever I want to. You've got a diffuser. The flash goes through the diffuser. It diffuses the light, makes it nice and soft and look nice. Okay. You've got so many options from this type of setup that you're spot for choice, to be honest with you. But those aren't the reasons why I have upgraded to this particular system. So here's the key. So if you look up here, you can see our little forehead, okay? You've got your camera here. You're shooting through whatever object you've got here. You know, you can have a flower or perhaps if you want to put on some leaves. Okay, so you can imagine just there, you're shooting through the leaf. That gives it a nice frame. Onto the subject, background card, right? Typically, when you're photographing a jumpy spider or an insect of some kind, that insect is moving around. Now, I'm just taking this off here so you can clearly see what I'm doing here. Now, if you've got a ball head that's got two controls, one is for the ball head itself, and one is for, like, it's a horizon um, turn, so you're doing any type of pano. You set your ball head up so it's level, and then you undo the one um, adjustment knob here, and you can turn the ball head. That means without moving any of the setup, I can literally just turn this around so if I've got the jumper spider and it's moving around the plant, I could turn that around. I don't need to turn the background. I don't need to turn the foreground around because you're still shooting through it. And it's brilliant. No more Lazy Susan. It's absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love it. But here is the key thing to this and why I've upgraded to this system. You can use it outdoors as well. Let that sink in for a little bit. Your indoor macro studio now works outdoors so no longer do you have to rely on stuff from the garden you have to bring in or any pets if you see something out in the world you can just plop it onto a setup you've already set up photograph it then place it back where you've got it from again check the species you are uh, photographing if it's a common species you're perfectly okay doing it don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because you can and uh, obviously if it's an endangered species don't even touch it okay but that is brilliant okay let me look at that and if you need any extra weight, you can always drill this platypod into the table, if you wish to. If you don't want to damage your table, you can get a plank of wood, drill it directly into there. And that is just not going anywhere. I mean, look at it. It's solid. Subject goes on there. And again, this is the type of setup I use to get these images here. You can always add different accessories to it as well. So you could also add these small rig arms. So then you can put your flash on there. Instead of having to bend the arm around to try and get it in place, you can just use the small rig arm to do that. And for you video people out there, you can fit the Lycra torches on it, and it's absolutely great setup for macro video. There's all kinds of possibilities you can do with this system, and I absolutely love it. The only annoying thing about this is the adapters for the, um, the Platypod gooseneck arms always get stuck on one of the items. You've got to get uh, pliers to get them off. If there was a solution to that, Oh, it'd be 100% brilliant, but there's always something that's uh, annoying on these solutions. Yes, there are improvements we can make to this rig. It does cost a little bit more than what the old one does, but it's a lot more sturdier. It's more user-friendly. And again, as I pointed out before, I can use this rig out in the field, whereas with the other one, it was very flimsy. The wind would blow the cards over. This one, it does not. It's absolutely fantastic. If you don't want to go with the full setup, these super clamps will also fit on the mini tripods. However, it will be a little unstable, but you can get away with it. But that is my macro studio rig. So we're going to be using this setup a lot 
So let me know what you thought about this new rig. If you have any suggestions or authorizations to this rig, let me know in the comments below. I will read them and I will give you feedback to it. If you need any help to build your own rig, then let me know on social media and I will do my best to help you. But that's where I shall leave this video. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support to help me bring you this content. My name's Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video and I will see you on the next one.